Welcome to the show. We hope you have a blast. Thanks for making time for the Dealer Talk Podcast. Another business leader, here's a penny for your thoughts. This ain't a regular conversation, baby. This that Dealer Talk. Yeah. This what up? Dealer Welcome talk. to another episode of the Dealer Talk Podcast. This is your host, Herb Anderson. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's check in with our co-host, Miss Charity Ann. Charity, what's up? What is up? Happy podcasting. Right I noticed you got a night. You. I what? You got you got a new camera. I did. Looks crisp. Nice and crisp. You know, you're you're getting all my hand me downs from last season as I upgrade my stuff over here. So maybe by next season you'll have all new yeah. upgraded. Yeah, you know, my ex husband used to say, I love that your name's charity because anytime anybody wants to give something away, they go, Who should I give this to? You should give it to charity. <laughs> So I'm used to hand me downs. That's hilarious. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of clever. Yep. Um, it's what my parents were thinking. Okay. Um, uh, what's going on? How are you? Oh, good. I'm doing yeah. good. Yep. Very cool. I'm that's excited. Cool. We're talking to my homie Jay at ATI. I'm excited to talk to you, sir. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, um, and it's, and, and it's about a topic that we, we don't do a lot of coverage on the, on the show, which is, has to do with transportation. And there's a lot of things happening in the industry right now with EVs and driver shortages and shortage of vehicles. So I I'm a little nervous be a because I don't actually know anything about transportation. So and yeah, when I'll I don't probably know be on anything, I get quiet. Right. So you'll you'll see me doing this a lot, reading any news of that right. I can get my hands on. Like, uh -huh. It's time for some automotive news. Automotive news for today. So um not to out myself and what I do during my Friday morning meetings, but Every Friday morning when they are giving the announcements and everything, I am usually looking through the news. And today, one of my sales guys was going on and on about selling vehicles over MSRP and how the reason that he can't sell cars is because we have a market adjustment on them. And I just happened to click on a car and driver article at the second that he was talking about it. That's title is, um, would you buy a car at $19,000 over MSRP? The majority say they would. So they did a study and they said that 65% of the people polled said that they would pay up to 39% over MSRP to get the car that they want. Okay, but during this condition or in general? It was published in October 22nd of this year, last week. Okay. Um, yeah, I think in, the, in, in, in this condition, because there's a lot of frustrating mm -hmm. customers out there. Car shoppers. But in normal times. In, oh, yeah. Yeah. In normal times. This is different. Car shoppers in Idaho are most desperate to get a specific vehicle and are willing to pay up to 71% over sticker price. Um, so to my family that lives in Idaho, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me. That's fun. <laughs> well, I mean, look, there's, there's, and that's, the, there there's more, how do I say it? There's, there's a lot more there to unveil or, or unwrap rather. Mm -hmm. uh, one is customer, like the, I, the, the value or price is in the eye of the beholder. Like as a salesperson, it is unfair for, for the customer. Like I, I used to tell this to my ASMs all the time. Like if you're, you're going to present an invoice to a customer that's a $5,000 repair, you can't go in there and be like, Mm. all scared because you don't know what the customer's abilities to pay that is if that's what the car needs man that's what the car needs mm -hmm. so you 
don't have to put your own expectations or your expectations, probably not the word, but your well, fear I, or your, ex, your ability mm -hmm. to pay for something into that experience for the customer. Well, that's right. What, it's the same that's thing. What ben talked about. Ben Gay, on that episode that we were talking to him about, he said that so often we are scared of the price tag we're selling. And so we don't sell it. Like we feel right, but, bad. But, um, you know, like it's the same thing with, with, with selling. And we had somebody else, I can't remember the name escapes him, but they were like, uh, oftentimes salespeople is afraid to sell a, a, a car because they, they can't afford the car themselves. Mm -hmm. Like it's not our, it's not our, it's not your like, job. just go and present it to the customer. Yeah. Give the option to the customer. Just tell them this is what it is. You know what I mean? You want the car. This is the car that you want. This is the price. And let the customer be like, no, you're crazy. You know what I mean? But we go in there already defeated and that's going to convey, like the customer is going to see that um, the way that you're presenting that and they're going to be apprehensive to do business with you because it looks like you have an agenda. Well, when you're all nervous, that, it doesn't just look like you have an agenda. It looks like you don't think that it's worth the value you're telling them. You're saying this isn't really worth the price that I'm trying to sell it to you to for. But, you know, if you want yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful with that, man. That's that's a that's a just to me in sales. That's a big no, no. It's like, dude, the product is what it is and your ability to pay or not pay for something should not be um, transplanted to the customer. Right. Like that's just, yeah. You leave your stuff. personal belief system and your personal everything at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I concur. Again, I concur. That's, we should call this episode the concur episode. I concur. Um, the interesting thing that was the other, oh my gosh, the other thing about this one was the four states that are willing to pay just 11% over MSRP were North Dakota, South Dakota, West Virginia, and Rhode Island. Aren't you, weren't you all excited about South Dakota in one of these episodes? <laughs> I was going to say, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, guess who else is from South Dakota? <laughs> oh, and we love you, man. We love you. Hi, um, <laughs> That's funny. Okay, that was one of mine. Um, do you have one? I or you have want me to do another one? I have to do the... Are you ready for my portion? Well, I've got one more. Well, let's go with yours and then I'll do mine. There was, I of course can't find the damn thing now, but there was an article that was talking about how your, oh, here it is. So do you know how often percentage wise you aren't using that EV charger in your home? Ask that again. What? Okay, I'll ask it a different way. How often do you use the EV charger in your house? Once a Percentage day. Percentage wise. In a day. I don't know. 20% of the day? No. Jeez, no. 5% maybe? Ninety. Well, wait, wait, wait. Let me think about that. Nobody's at home most of the day. So everything's shut off here for the most part. I don't know. That's a good question. Percentage wise, I don't know. I'd say it's 20% probably, if so, not higher. The home charging point is not being used for 90% of the time. Well, but wait, are we talking about, see, that's why I didn't understand your question. Are we talking about utilization? Like if you were to see how much usage of electricity is happening in my house no, right I'm now, or are we talking about talking using about, it as in usability? Yes. I'm specifically talking about charging your car. Right, but are you talking about electricity that's generated from my house or are you talking about using it, like using the actual charger to charge my car? I'm talking about using your charger to charge your car. 
Yeah, once a day, like yeah. not, you know, but that once a day is 10 hours or eight hours. 90% so of the time you are not using your charger. So. For sure. Um, there are companies um, that have started popping up that you can, it's like a, it's like an Uber for your, your um, it's like an Airbnb for your charger. So you can sell, you can, how did they word it? P person to person charging. So, or peer to peer charging, charging. Peer to peer. So you sell your charging port time at your charging port. That's at your house to other people. And people make money off of this. That's pretty cool. And then they have like apps where you can literally find places that will let you where you can go to people's houses and charge your car. Yeah, you know, I was reading, was it our episode with 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 Guild Boy? Or maybe it was a, another podcast I was listening to, but they were talking about how you could use your EV to power your house, like if the power went out or something like that. Was, did we have that conversation that was, with him? Yeah, well, James had said that you're supposed to be able to use your Tesla, but Tesla highly discouraged. Tesla, right. But they're building that capability into some of these cars, like the I think oh, yeah, the Lightning, yeah, yeah. like the Leaf, do it with... Leaf, the bi mm -hmm. bi directional directional charging. That was yeah. that was me that that told you that. Yeah. Not another well, podcast. So... <laughs> So, I mean, it, 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 it's interesting, right? It's a way to... Well, um, fascinating. What I think yeah. is fascinating is that we haven't jumped on to that bandwagon. Like, why Why do we do that? We're like, well, hey, here's this really, really, really efficient way to do this. Or this other one that's like totally non-efficient. Let's use that one. We do it all the time in our society. Yeah, but it's, it's it's again, going back to that episode, it's the infrastructure, everything that's been created around the inefficient mode of transportation that we have and to uh, to try to change our current infrastructure to meet a, a more efficient way if you will because i don't I, I agree with james i don't think that that evs per se in the way that it stands is a more efficient way i think that if you're really going for um efficiency and um um, environmental concerns, then there's a much simpler, not simpler, but there's a, there's a much more effective way to do that. But anyway, um, you know, that's what, and then everything's tied into it. Legislation is tied into this inefficient way that we've created mm -hmm. these, these cities. There's, um, um, you know, there's all this infrastructure with gas stations and all this money that's being generated and, you know, like money talks. So that's all I've got. What do you have? All right, so you know what time it is. It's time for some market insights brought to you by Lotlinks. So, see, I got things in folders here, so now it's very easy to access stuff. We're getting, we're getting there, folks. Okay, so here is uh, uh, Lotlinks weekly market data, and this is from uh, 1024 to 1030. So to close off the month, New inventory sales were down by 8.1%. Used inventory sales were down by a staggering 13.9%. Uh, shopper volume continues to be uh, up plus 10%, but engagement continues to be down at negative 3%. And inventory counts continue to surpass the 70% levels. So same story, folks. We well, have... 13%? um used car sales or used inventory and In, we're not talking about sales used inventory. well yes used inventory sales i'm sorry excuse me so um same situation that we've that's kind of been trending um although the only variance here that was interesting is the new inventory sales were, were also down but so new inventory sales down used inventory sales down shopper volume continues to be there 
but the engagement is going down. And then we continue to have high levels of inventory. So again, pricing, pricing, pricing. Let's get smarter on pricing, folks. Stop trying to hold gross. Like mm -hmm. it's, you know, those were great times, but you know, and look, even as a differentiator, if you have a better price and there's several of those vehicles in the market, then you're going to have a competitive advantage and the shopper volume is there. It, get, it allows you to get rid of your, your aged inventory or that inventory that you're in wrong because the value of car, the cars are coming down. And then it opens you up to, um, to go, go back into the market and acquire some inventory at, at some adjusted prices, which is still going to be higher than what the car is really worth, but it's going to be less of a risk. And as we come from, you know, the high, high point to normal point, um, and you start, you tr you're trickling down, you're going to, um, just be in a better position to, um, you know, kind of normalize, make money and, take advantage of the traffic and the demand that still continues to be out there. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. That's really all. I mean, there's some other stuff here, but, but you know, nothing really major other than just kind of um, the, those market insights. And I'm going to try to do these, um, every week on every episode and, um, you know, thank you to lot links for, for providing some, um, uh, market insights that we can share with everybody. So thank that's you. it. Market right. insight brought to you by lot links. Blog post of the week. <laughs> All right, blog post of the week. Okay, so <laughs> we're talking about artificial intelligence here. Yeah, is, I did some research. What is artificial intelligence within the automotive industry? Oh, let me pull. So I did some research within the automotive industry. Um, let's step back a second. Do you know who the grandfather or the, the pioneer of the artificial intelligence is do you know who coined the phrase um no but it's in the blog post because i it's saw it in there is. his name i learned i did some rapid learning while i was i my problem is that i could easily go down the rabbit hole that is the knowledge and i was trying really hard to control myself John McCarthy is the pioneer in the field of AI. He's best known, known for coining the phrase artificial intelligence. The first use of the term was in 1956, the first time that a robot, um, industrial robot was used was in General Motors plant in 1961. So the definition, according to Science Direct, um, artificial intelligence is defined as the simulation of human intelligence by a system or a machine goal oriented to mimic human behavior that includes perceiving, reasoning, learning, planning, predicting, and so on. So mimics logic. Yeah. All of the facets of it. F uh, um, it, it it's interesting to me because I hear this. And every time I, I hear it, I cringe. Like every, everybody has an AI, everybody now, everything is AI this, AI that. And um, what about HI? What about human intelligence? And where is that? Where are we leaving that in the space? Because the premise of the article is we try to define it, but at the same time, um, we're going to write a series of articles based on, on, on this topic. And one of the things that we wanted to leave uh, the audience with, with or ponder the question is um what's what's better is human uh, intelligence better than artificial intelligence because there's a lot of gaps there's a lot of instances where so-called ai has caused 
some really weird situations, inconvenient mm -hmm. situations for dealerships, like the ones we explained in the article, which I'm not going to give up here because it's freaking hilarious. So <laughs> go read the article. But um, yeah, I mean, is it, it, it? I'm not opposed AI. I think that AI is a is 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 necessary, and it's the next logical evolution. But shouldn't be we shouldn't we be focusing on getting HI right mm -hmm. before we start to add AI into into the into the equation? Yeah, if you don't have okay, so if an AI is programmed to mimic the human experience, then the human is the one who's doing the programming. So if we haven't fine-tuned the processes that we're using within the automotive space what, what what are we programming the ai to do right not the right job because that's a problem well and that's a good point that you bring up because i think a lot of people don't they they they're not using the terminology correctly right. so there's artificial intelligence and then there's machine learning and i think a lot of people think that word when they when the word AI is thrown out there, that it's machine learning that they're talking about, and they're two distinct things. AI is you program the the system to do um, a set a set of of tasks, mm -hmm. right? Machine learning is that the the that the the system learns and then um, makes it more efficient based on learning. And obviously at a more advanced and accelerated pace than a human being. And a lot of times I feel like when we're having these AI conversations, we're talking about, well, the AI gets smarter and it's going to do all these things. Yeah, it's going to get smarter and do a lot of things in this confined space that you tell them this task to do. Right. But, you know, machine learning is, is oftentimes I think that that machine learning is kind of like the expectation that that dealers have when we talk about AI. And we're not explaining that correctly in the industry too. So we're creating some, there is a place for, 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 for artificial intelligence and certain things. And I think that it, I'm not, you know, the, the goal here isn't to knock artificial intelligence. It's just to put the right expectation on what mm -hmm. artif artificial intelligence is within our space. And then from there, um, the question still remains. What's better right now for where we are in the industry today, human intelligence or artificial intelligence? Or you know, better artificial yet. Artificial intelligence leaves a lot of dealers mm -hmm. high and dry a lot of, a lot if you on a percentage of the time. And then we, we, then it's a set it and forget it. And because the machine's doing mm -hmm. it or the AI is doing it, we, we feel more comfortable being like, okay, well, the AI, I, I had a conversation with the dealership recently and they were like, well, the AI is supposed to be doing all these things for me. And it's like, no, dude, the AI doesn't replace your staff. It doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it's and there the to AI assist. AI isn't learning. Right. It's there to assist in, in, in you know, some way, shape or form. But you're going to really, you're going to leave your, you're going to leave the task to this, this um, robot or this artificial intelligence. It's just not. Right. And then we go back. We're not looking the, at it properly yet. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, the question is, which one, which one should we be utilizing, and how? You know, so you wouldn't set it and forget it with an employee. Oh well, I trained you. It took right. two weeks at the very beginning of your job to train you. So have fun. Oh, you would be checking in and consistently making sure that they weren't slipping up or they were learning and they were growing that's where that focus needs to be is making sure that all of your processes, whether they're human or they're artificial intelligence or anything are working to the best of the ability for you in your dealership. And that's what we're going to be talking about. And I'm excited. <laughs> so yeah, make sure to go to the blog post um, and read the, 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 uh, read the article and check out that that example. That's a real live example, folks, and it's hilarious. <laughs>
That's why thousands of dealerships trust Four Eyes to help with things like automated inventory email updates and ensuring all of your leads get into the CRM. To try Four Eyes for free, visit foureyes.io slash dealer talk. That's foureyes.io slash dealer talk. Anyway, it's time to introduce our guest of the week, Jay from ATI. Welcome to the show, sir. All right, Jay, welcome to the show, man. I'm super excited to have you here. We kick things off with an intro, so tell us about you. Oh, thanks. All right, so it's great to see you guys. Thank you for having me. Um, Charity Ann, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And Herb, it has been a minute. It's been said. a minute. So yes, sir. it's been a minute. Um, all right. Yeah. So just to clear the room out right away from the get go. So my name is Jay Wurzberger and I'm the founder of ATI Auto Business. Um, it once was Auto Transport Intel, which we contain the original mission, which is the original mission. Uh, this channel is now five years old. It's in its sixth year. And, um, and I am, I'm the driving force, the creator, um, you know, I come up with the shows and I manage the content, et cetera. That's the, the YouTube channel is my baby. It is a YouTube channel. And the purpose is to provide education as a resource and a network and a safe place uh, and a connection point for all the parts just in the vertical of transportation. That was the original mission because uh, the vertical of auto transport and car shipping is there's so many hurt feelings just in our vertical. And in fact, I, I feel good when I hear like, like a, like a dealership has, you know, you got your used cars and new cars and then the recon and the service and BDC and F and I, and these guys argue with these guys. It always makes me feel so much better because that's what we have. <laughs> <laughs> we have all of that. Uh, and more, um, because like at fundamentally carriers and brokers have a major dispute going on. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is help those two groups understand, uh, what they're doing for each other and the things they shouldn't do, the things they sh need to fix. And I mean, I'm no, you know. I'm no authority to come in and, and tell people what to do, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm Phil Donahue passing the microphone around like, okay, let's give everyone a chance to talk because nobody else is doing that. And I don't know why actually, it, it, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I live in existence of like, God, really nobody's doing that. Mm -hmm. And I always ask the really like the questions that drive everyone else crazy. I'm like, I'm the only one with this question that can't be true can't be but i don't know maybe it is but trying to bring brokers and carriers together just that alone uh that was about a year of content i still do that and it's working <laughs> now i mean i actually had a show and i know like you know like when this comes out it'll be like you know months months ago meaning like because time moves so fast too i don't want to i don't want to put a pinpoint in time as to anything because i like evergreen content which is another thing i don't talk about who went bankrupt or that's not news it's not information that's gossip and i try mm -hmm. to stick away from, you know i don't i'm not into gossip i don't know why anybody is <laughs> it's pointless charity and it changes <laughs> right oh, that right, down. okay okay there we go yeah <laughs> i just hit my own bell there you go <laughs> yeah so uh, I was just thinking, I even know the Spanish word for gossip. Ah, uh, so <laughs> all right. So, but uh I'm already off track. But ATI <laughs> now ATI is I've gone, I've broken out of my own vertical because I say this, and the, that's how we're actually gonna learn and, and educate and network and grow. Is that uh I'm asking dealers to learn more about transporters, I'm asking transporters to learn more about dealers and around and around dealers, auctions, carriers, brokers, insurance, equipment. Um, we're not going to do another show today about ramps. Okay. Like 
there's a channel for that. <laughs> but that's not what we're doing. Right on, right on, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is going to be a no, good episode. No right, exactly. I exactly. don't even know ramps no. were a topic. Well, they, <laughs> but they are on Facebook. That's another thing. So, like, I get a lot of – that's what I do is I, you know, I look for – I look around the hallways and see what people are talking about. This is so great. This guy post, this carrier posted on Facebook. And I'm sure, like, when he hears that I've been, I mean, I've been talking about this on shows. He posted, my ETA is my ETA. And he was dead serious. And a lot of carriers feel that way. And I get it. I get it. What this is, is care, most, many carriers, owner-operators, plus there's company drivers. So who are we talking about? Your right. owner-operator that owns the business, drives the truck. Finds the loads. He's up to his neck in like stuff to do. So when people are calling, when the broker's calling and the customer's calling, where's my car? Where's my car? He's had enough. And he says, my ETA is my ETA. And I get it. But it that's a fundamental problem because mm -hmm. your ETA is everybody's ETA. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. And Especially I'm here. Time. Yeah, I'm here to talk about that. And again, that's, you know, that, so it's fun for me because I'm like, wow, no one else is really doing, picking up on this stuff. All right, cool. Well, we let's, like, let's... literally, we say <laughs> when we're talking to customers, we say, well, and you know, the vehicle comes to the port and then it's got to get on a truck. And at that point, we're at the whims of the drivers. What? And you know what? And I <laughs> want to clarify. I'm glad you said that. I want to clarify. It's not that no one is, but in trucking, it's like, it's just assumed that the carriers... The carriers have their side of it, mm -hmm. and then everybody else has their side of it, and the right. two shall never meet. <laughs> and I'm here to say, no, yeah, they we're shall meet. And, and yeah. this is where I, a lot of carriers don't like my channel, and that's okay. All right, I've gotten used to it. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of carriers, but there are, yeah, there are like 30 year you know, veteran truckers that are like, no, I'm not going to watch that stupid channel. And okay, well, we'll see who's in business in 10 years. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, but we got, we, I'm going to steal that. We got to get a bell, Terry. <laughs> this cool. is what everybody's been saying lately. So it's a service bell. It's available on Amazon. I love where I got mine. <laughs> everybody's going to start getting them. And then you got to, you got to get the buzzer. Yeah, there you go. That's we'll a good attach a link in Also the available on Amazon. <laughs> like everything else yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> this coffee probably came through amazon earlier today <laughs> oh, that's funny all right so let's i wanted to start like really fifty thousand because obviously there's a lot of things going on in in yeah. the industry that yeah. that impacts different areas transportation being one of those yeah so what what is the 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 biggest thing that we have right now because there's 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 freight issues and things being stuck at the port for a really long time i don't know if that's still going on but i know a few months ago i was still reading articles about you know it being a, almost impossible to get these these containers out of certain ports and obviously that that delays everything else and then we had an episode where we talked to somebody and one of the things that came up was a shortage of drivers and how that's impacting things so what's the what's the state of the union, so to speak? Yeah, it's a really good question. And I mean, as, as you're saying it, I'm pondering it. I'm thinking about articles I've read and what people are saying. Um, let's go to the port stuff first. I'm with you. I don't know where we're at exactly on the ports. And this is actually drayage. Do you talk about drayage? Do you know what drayage is? Okay, cool. Is it, for for so, shipping... Yes, but I, I have I, I now have realized there's no end to what I need to learn and share. Yeah. Drayage has nothing to do with auto transport, but I've looked into what this is. All right. So drayage is the short movements around the port, which when you think about shipping containers and the, you know, the arms pull them off the ships and then they put them on trucks and then they move them around and they stack them. Drayage is a ton of work and logistics because think of all the shipping containers, all the ports and all the world 
that are sitting on ships, that are sitting at ports, that need to be on trucks, and the trucks get in line, and the trucks are waiting, and the ships are waiting, and drayage is insane. And what's happened is, as we get these new insane problems, like, you know, COVID, and there, we talked about it, now we're done talking about COVID. <laughs> are you with me? <laughs> exactly. All right, good. Because I have seen people waste whole hours on COVID. I'm like, uh, it's over. Well, it's yeah, or not. I don't know. Does it even matter? So uh, it's like liquids and shoes it's on normal airplanes. Now, it's dude. never going to end. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's good stuff. Somebody's going to make a podcast. Liquids and shoes and drayage. So, <laughs> which I'm right about that, too. Um, all right. So uh, what I've, what I've what's caught my attention is the autonomous vehicles that now handle drayage 24 hours. Now that so is the in news. the in the port? Yes. And huh. you know the Europeans were doing it first. Mm -hmm. Right? They well, just... I used to be in the export business and when you said okay. drayage, the one thing I remember is seeing drayage on the freight bills. Right, it's like a charge on your on your freight bill. Yeah. Yeah, like they put this thing, and then you have drayage charge in there. Time and but energy, I, and yeah, right. So it's interesting. I never, I never, and I remember paying for it, but I never know exactly what it is until you're bringing it up right now. And wait, 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 wait. You remember paying for it? You were just like, huh? I wonder what this is. It That's was okay. well, you asked, but they're like, anyway. yeah, it's just fees. It's just it's just labor fees, and you're like, right, okay, they just, whatever. They shoved it in there, and you know, you just <laughs> right. Went. Um, like but so ibuprofen you... at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you're saying that now they have autonomous vehicles that do this in the port? That are moving yeah. things around. Wow, that's super yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, and there, and 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 so then you're like, well, okay, what does that look like? Because what it really is is it's more of like a, a a motorized skid that can turn and do. And now it's, I mean, it looks like an Amazon warehouse. Have you seen some of this Amazon warehouse footage? Whoa, yeah, dude, it's insane. Mm -hmm. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, we're there, yeah. Uh, and so that's what they're doing with the ports with drayage, which, you know, you can wear the tinfoil hat or not. But I mean, that's to me, that's the news. Yeah, we can look at fuel prices. We can talk about all kinds of stuff. But the news is motorized, autonomous drayage dudes taking taking the workload. That's the news. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's funny. We talked about, we had an article on our automotive news section. So we do an automotive news section, our blog post of the week. And one of the things that I brought up was how that autonomous technology is bleeding into, you know, it's kind of having the side effect on, on these companies like Amazon internally in their warehouses. I think UPS or FedEx or both, one of, you know, are using, are starting to use that technology. And they're even talking about um, using some of that to do autonomous um, autonomous delivery. Like, you know, at some point they talked about these, uh, yeah. these drones that were going to go and drop things off. And now it's kind of moved more into like these autonomous vehicles or robots to a certain degree that would deliver things to people. So, so uh, what I, what I also like to do is now that like we've done that, I don't want to like, you know, just drift off into space and get completely off topic. Let's come back to Earth for a second. Okay, if we know that's happening, then how can we pay more attention to the business of automotive so that we're not trapped in a buggy whip vertical where we're just irrelevant one day? But, but is it, it right now? Is the, is the is the issue more so than than that than not just that but the, not just the technology side which i agree that's the bigger conversation but it's getting the inventory what well, th th thank you exactly that's where i'm headed mm -hmm. exactly so here's what's changed in uh, in auto transport and i say what i've learned when I, some people when they hear auto transport like oh god <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing that all right, I'm going back to so I say vehicle logistics, transportation, car shipping, home delivery, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, so 10 years ago, 
before like 10 is safe because five is already like, wow, there was already a lot of technology being developed five years ago. So right. 10 years ago, a nine car hauler moving nine units to the auction from the auction here and there all day long. Sure. That was normal. But we know there's a shift because even Cottrell Trailers, which is a major auto transport trailer manufacturer, I mean, any legit car hauler knows Cottrell. Cottrell has made moves to focus more on the smaller capacity trailers. That, I don't think, has ever really happened. And what's the reason? Because of digital auctions because of less inventory the moves that are required have changed so are, not entirely are, are, but a lot do you do you think the future is less vehicles in a transport man i suck at predicting the future <laughs> right so um do you think I mean, we'll go to more like the one transporter carvana model at some point or do you think that we'll 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 have a combination of the two or the the best yeah the the best way to be safe with any prediction is just to use the word hybrid hybrid yeah <laughs> hybrid right so we'll still and have we'll nine go back cars. to this in two years and yeah. be like yep so, we said it. he was right <laughs> hybrid <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, I like that. <laughs> so, because you you will you and here's but I mean, not only that. If you want to get really tinfoil hat, what and this is another area. This is where I think the more I inspect what's happening and changing, the more we do have in common with other verticals, dealers, auctions, transportation. Because look at what the OEMs are trying to do. With e with future EV sales, what mm -hmm. are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. What is yeah. Ford doing? Yeah. Telling direct, dealers, direct yeah, consumer. we're going to run the show. You know, good yeah. job, guys. <laughs> we'll take it from here. <laughs> we'll take it from here. Thank you so much for all your for all your years. We got it. <laughs> yeah. So I I mean I proposed a whole uh, section of content. I call it blind spot. Okay, Ford or OEM or whoever. I mean, you guys have a lot more experience than I do because I'm a media guy. But I mean, I really absorb the news because I'm dedicated to... Was it automotive has... I've caught the automotive bug. Automotive is a... is a It's, it's a bug and mm -hmm. you catch it. And it sticks with you and you never retire. I agree. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I have it now. <laughs> I should have worn my mask early. <laughs> uh, so i'm a media guy that's gotten the automotive bug especially in transportation and logistics because it's fascinating and it'll be never-ending problems forever logistics is a never-ending problem yeah at the time although jeff bezos man shoot i don't know man there's there's some there's some interesting things with ev and autonomy and you know trucks like rigs that is is looking it's looking pretty exciting i know that there's a lot yeah. of things going on in, in this vertical that i, I kind of wanted to point out like i was talking to somebody recently and they were telling me how it's how difficult it is to get trailers um there's yeah. obviously dr driver shortages that we've talked yeah. about right yeah we'll, yeah we'll do that yeah there's the ev side of things with the weight mm -hmm. and weight capacities that these that that's going to be something that's going to need to be addressed i mean there's all kinds of things and then on top of everything else we have this weird unstable market um well i was just mentioning in in, in another session we did earlier that um, inventory levels are at the highest right so i think 70 percent or something like that that means that there was a lot of vehicles in flux right in movement and as dealers either are unable to move some of that inventory or have to have to give it back to auction or wholesale it or whatever the case may be, they're going to have to find ways, the logistics side of things. And then the biggest part, the biggest um, pressure point, in my opinion, for transportation right now, more than anything else, is how do we compete with a la Carvana? How do we do that effectively 
as a dealership? How do we move cars from point A to point Z? Um, and who do we partner up with? Because that's the part that they do really well. And now that they bought Odessa and now they have this, um, you know, this infrastructure portion that was missing because in my commute, I used to see maybe 10 or 20 Carvana transporters in a month. Now I see a truckload every single day, both ways. So you're looking at the trucks, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, that's it. Dude. That's the first step. Look at the trucks and see who's what company it is. Right. Yeah. So th that yeah. to me, that's like, dude, this is this is this is for real. This is like it's it's Carmax, no Carvana. You see them a lot. Um, yeah. But as well as other like United Road or uh, depending on which different parts of the country, you see more like here in Kansas City, you see a lot of Jack Cooper. Um, I was on the West Coast and I saw more like extreme. Uh, I even saw a, a Tesla car hauler, which I had heard. I've heard of the Chupacabra. Oh, wow. I have yeah. seen it. Yeah, I've seen a <laughs> Tesla car hauler. <laughs> um what I, like I wrote i wrote you wrote, you mentioned and i wrote and i just want to sidebar and say you know i i was always impressed during like uh my favorite thing about politics and the midterms and the debates is watching the notes that are taken <laughs> while while somebody's talking there's st you'll see them taking notes taking notes and I, yeah. I i've adopted that i do that now like you were saying and i wrote these things down because I want to say this is that it's, it's the way to organize information. EV is getting all this attention, the mm -hmm. weight and the stuff, charging, knowledge. It's important. But given all the other things going on, market, inventory, competitors, EV's taking that back seat. And I don't know if everyone's saying that. Um, I've done a couple shows on EV and it's important and there's a lot to learn, but we have so many other bigger fish to fry at the moment. Speaking of driver shortage, um, not only do we have a, like everybody job shortage, right? but driver shortage we already had. And this is also, I, it, I think it's kind of a misdiagnosed. So, so, sorry to interject, but you yeah. said you already had like before COVID? See, this is the problem. And and you know what's interesting? I think that different industries, yeah, they already had problems. We just didn't but know because it, it wasn't public knowledge. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. We've had drivers. We. Trucking, transportation, logistics has had driver shortage forever. Because it's not a, it's not a wanted job. Being a trucker, being a car hauler used to be more awesome it's been regulated to death and hmm. that is something i believe truckers and car haulers will get on board with me saying that it's true it's been regulated to death the fmcsa is putting drivers and carriers out of business i don't know if they know it i it, it could just be well we're, get, we're putting the bad guys out of business, not just the bad mm. guys. There are plenty of smart, capable business owner operators that are, they've had it. Can't make money doing this. I mean, you got to be a lawyer and a trucker. To mm. man I, and so this is a problem. We have, it's a what about Amazon? Problem. How does Amazon play into that? Because their, their rates, and I've read several articles that their rates mm -hmm. cause all kinds of so, uh, they, it, it just compresses the, the the wages in the industry, right? That well, we have that too, and those are the those are the brokers I was talking about earlier. But then you have, but but some, and I, maybe I'm paraphrasing or or I'm taking this out of context. But yeah. something that stuck in my mind when I was reading that is that the new people coming into the industry because they don't know what they should be asking, they take these rates at that low, at those low prices, and then that makes it harder for everybody else because now that you accepted this this load yeah you're they're more willing to put these crazy low numbers out there and the between the broker and stuff and now you're you're bidding on these on these loads that you can't make any money on so now we have a new problem uh that 
I, it's exacerbating the problems we already had. But now we have like, I call them get rich clickbait YouTubers. <laughs> Transportation now has guys and gals on YouTube and what? It will soon it'll be TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram. <laughs> I don't know. But right now on YouTube, there are videos that are misleading and wrong in what they say you're going to be able to do with just, just jump in your truck and start making money. And I don't think that it's on purpose, but you go back five years later, either that guy's out of business or he's, or she has walked back some of that information. I don't know if it's this, like being a YouTuber or a podcaster is the new Hollywood it's the way mm -hmm. to do American Idol. I think there's a lot of people that would rather just stop working in general and just, you know, make MP4s and stuff. Sure. You guys see that? And oh, yeah. And sure. again, as, a, as a, I've been a media guy since the 80s, this is so, I mean, I feel like if I have if I have an arena where I can be a little critical, it's this one. Man, you could throw a rock and find a podcaster these days. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. right. Damn I totally and it's agree. like, oh my god, really? You have a podcast too? I hear about a new podcast all the time. Now, you have a podcast too. It's on. It's on everybody's business a, card, right? But <laughs> and the thing is, I, you you have a podcast. You, you see, you and I have a podcast. You have a podcast. The thing, but it it doesn't mean. <laughs> uh, anyways, that was fun. I know. I, I I right. Nobody says I this totally stuff, but I think that. everyone's thinking it. Yeah, no, I totally yeah. get that. And but see, the 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 thing about it is, in the past, to do what we are doing right now would have been uber expensive. You well, would have needed hundreds upon hundreds, think, if right. not millions of dollars. Well, right? you did, and you did, and I, it's funny. So I okay, I worked for a webcast company twenty years ago, five years before the invention of YouTube. I worked at a webcast company, and we would charge thousands of dollars. For what you can now do with like a seven dollar webcam, hmm. yeah. And so and so and so now you have these free platforms yeah. where anybody can get on, and you know, and I, you know, more power to them, right? To everybody, you know, everybody that's out there, not just podcast, but YouTube and, or whatever. And communication is great; it's important for sure. But you have those extreme examples, like the guy in his truck who's so excited and had a great day that he's making videos that that could be every day. Mm -hmm. Let's exactly. talk again in six months. Let's find out how true that is. And, and do you, do, does that guy go back and make a video? Jesus, I was totally wrong. Well, and that's where I was going with this, right? <laughs> no. <Like> you, <laughs> you, just because you have a platform and you get on that platform, people automatically associate authority with that for some weird reason. Ah, you because we're I mean? a media culture. That's correct. It, yeah. So, that but correct. That doesn't mean, right? That doesn't mean anything. Like it, you still, you have to be more careful now than ever before, because whatever you hear, you have to triple quadruple oh, yeah. check just to make sure that that information is relevant and accurate. If you're like being responsible. On Facebook, you know, you're and, like, hey, I saw it on Facebook. It must be true. And right. I and so and I actually own I own a small piece early on to grow this channel. I created 20 steps to start car hauling blog post. Thank God I didn't say 20 steps to, to get rich car hauling. <laughs> I didn't do that. I skipped the clickbait. I just I talked to other owners. I said, what if there are 20 steps? And it kind of came to be 20 steps because I was like, what are the steps? People kept asking me, how do you start a, a trucking business? And so I went to others and found the list and tried to put it in order. But I know where it said you're going to get rich. And now, five years later, we actually talk people out of doing it. Why? We, because we don't, there's no need to, why, why, why speed up the process of going BK? Mm. just go get a job somewhere if you're you know listen if you if you have if you have an education in, in dental technician and, and don, endodontist physical therapy why do you want to get in a truck 
What made you where this is where I say, where'd you get that idea? I actually, this is one of my slogans. Where'd you get that idea? Well, I talked to a guy and I saw a video. Uh-huh. And what else? Have you, have you talked to where are you going to get your customers? Oh, my customers are going to, I'm going to get the load board. I'm going to get on the load board and that's my customer. Really? Load boards move cars. <laughs> load boards have cars, but that's not who's moving the car. Yeah, I. It's funny that you, I saw this post from Gary V yesterday, Man, and he was talking just him. about that. Like, you, you have. He was talking about like the generational change and how there's, um, you the generation of today have, they have options. They know that they can go on YouTube. Like you said, they know that they can go do these things with these social media platforms and make money that way. And so their, their quote unquote careers kind of take a back seat if they ever even start one. Right. But <laughs> just like everything else, dude, there's people that are good at it and there's people that are not good at it. And there's, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a spectrum just because these channels exist and you can get on them. Doesn't mean that you should, or it doesn't mean that you're mm -hmm. going to be able to monetize it or make money with it. Or, you know what I mean? So you got to look at that. somebody has to take the garbage, right? Somebody still has to do this other stuff. And so I think we lose ourselves sometimes in the, I don't know the, the I don't know if flashiness is the right word, but in the in the potential of yeah, I'm passionate about this, and I can go talk about it on a podcast, and I can make money doing it. But there's a gap between actually doing the thing and getting from point from point zero to that place. Instant gratification, like they think that they're going to go online and then they're going to be able to become multimillionaires right away because they That's, see people yeah. do it. Well, the people yeah. that they see do it are. The multimillionaires. <laughs> and and, and, right. and when, yeah, and when you when you are doing it, then you can go on a platform and say, like, yeah, follow your dream and follow your passion. And you know what I mean? Right, because you're doing it. But that it's doesn't like, mean everybody else is gonna end up the same place. It's like a meme or a TikTok that's like when you see somebody succeed doing something easily, what you aren't seeing is the hours and hours and hours and years that it took to get to that point. Right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Now we never get to see that part. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go yeah. ahead. I, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean it's it's a good it's a good. Um, yeah. It, it's just, it's 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 good to 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 mention that because I mean it, it goes to what we were talking about earlier too with credibility and putting and being. Um, irresponsible with information that you're putting out there, whether it's in the car business or the transportation industry or where, whatever, you know, and if you're going to do it, then I think you, if, if you're trying to do it for the long term, you better check yourself because the one thing that, that happens online is you, you become exposed. You know what I mean? You could go back to the beginnings of something and be like, hey, look at what what this and this has happened now. Right. With artists and things like that, where they they said this comment five, ten years ago and now it's coming to surface. And it's like, oh, oh, oh shit. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the bad tweets. Um, right. Uh, I what. It seems like it's interesting because we're, we're talking about several things here um we're, we're within our automotive lane and we're also just talking about like media passion what do you do mm -hmm. uh one of the things i know is that there's 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 absolutely uh, there's absolutely a need for drivers carriers truckers and movement of freight and goods it's just that in today's world it's so much harder than you realize and all I got to do is say FMCSA, and that is so much stuff. It actually blows my mind. We have a show now. So ATI is a channel. And I say it that way in that um, I, I have several shows, and one of the shows that we do is just, uh, it's called Live Carrier Advice. It's trucking regulations and business advice and information, which is somewhat of a snooze fest.
But this is the nitty gritty of, are you going to succeed? Because I think that, I think a lot of folks think, well, I'm, you know, I'm good with, I'm good with equipment and I've got, I can stay up late and drive. That's the job. I wish that was the job. That might've mm-hmm. been the job 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. That's not how it works today. The FMCSA is going to be all over you with regulations, like I read on Facebook. That's how I use Facebook really as a just to take the temperature of what's happening <laughs> with different folks. And like this, uh, a lady was put out of service because the DOT officer said she was a foot over. Maybe she wasn't put out of service. Maybe it was a violation, but it hung up her day. She was a foot over. And she's saying, What is this? Okay. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna you gotta know everything before you get out there, but that was an area where you might have wanted to know a little bit more before that happened. And everybody was replying, Well, did you take the bed off your truck? No. Okay, well, how much do you need to go into the law before you hit the road? And in trucking, mm-hmm. it's a lot more than you think. And now you're hung up with the DOT and tickets and violations. And you're not even, now you're, you're way off your time frame. Yeah. That um, sucks. Well, another thing that I wanted to, 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 to bring up here, um, and I don't know how much you know about this or if you can share some insights, but I, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard, and it's a little bit of a departure from what we were talking about, but I've heard um, uh, s- several people talk about these these train issues and cars being stuck in trains and damage. how is that train playing damage. into right well no just they're mm. like train embargoes or something like that where the mm. the trains got stopped and the cars are on the train and they won't make it to the destination in time and nobody has any information mm. and so how much that on the transportation side is is you know well it has to do with 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 our with the industry with the automotive industry so what i try to do and i was going to say this earlier so this would be a good time to say is that to cuz i don't i'm not big on speculation live um that's another area that like i've mentioned gossip mm-hmm. speculation live is i'm not going to do any homework i'm just going to talk mm-hmm. well i'm not going to do that that's not fair that's not fair to me or the, or anybody else So I read like crazy and I talk to people and I try to learn everything I can. All right. So what do I know about trains? Well, I think the train, uh, train transport applies more to new vehicles and finished vehicle logistics and international and national transportation. Um, but what you just told me, I don't know about now. I'm not surprised. Because again, every man, everything's overregulated. Yeah, which is you know, as I, as I talk like this, I sound like I, I'm on a certain political side, and I'm right down the middle. I'm not on any political side. I don't even no, but we are overregulated. Everything mm-hmm. is overregulated. I'm not surprised trains get stopped. <laughs> Under what regulation? I don't know. Probably doesn't even matter. But sure, that makes sense. Of course they get stopped. How much, how much that, okay. So how much of that is going to, I mean, where's the, where's the level? Because if it wasn't overly regulated and it is now, is there still room to push more? Is that something that we have to be looking out in the industry as future issues? I'll tell you what, what you just made me think of is, okay. So the Inflation Reduction Act. Which is just a great name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's not so at all. Right. The Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, I believe contained incentives for EVs. Mm-hmm. I think purchasing EVs. Okay. I'm going off what I've read without... I didn't read the Inflation Reduction Act. I've got other great uh, snooze <laughs> bedtime material to get into. Um, <laughs> But uh, then once other countries heard about these EV incentives, they started making noise. Well, 
I, I know, I, I think I'm pretty sure there was China was in the headlines. Well, China's not on board with your EV incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act because that's going to affect our pricing when we import EVs to the United States. Anyways, this political stuff gets so complicated so quickly. And at wh where in the Inflation Reduction Act is the EV pork? You know, so you got all the pork and all the bills and Mm -hmm. I don't even know right. why, how anybody keeps track. So my, yeah. I think what I'm trying to say is we'll always have those complicated issues. Now that we're a global marketplace, I know that the, the Tesla news is Tesla of the many complicated things Tesla does. Um, Tesla has issues shipping vehicles to China or shipping them out of China. It's one of the two because they're in uh, some competitive nature with China EVs. Now, again, there's a there's a guy right now like, Jay, I don't care about Tesla and China and shipping. I get it. Yeah. But we are now, you know, if you smoke a cigarette inside of a balloon, everybody feels it. And that's where we are now. Right. We are For all sure. smoking cigarettes inside of a balloon in this global marketplace. Yeah. Crazy, man. Well, listen, dude, thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. We 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 are getting close to that time, but there's one question that, that yeah. I want to ask you before before we kind of close off here. Um, and it has to do with the with the the weight situation. Because yeah. EVs obviously is the big topic, and there's some states like California and I think New York have both said that they're going 100 percent EV by 2035 and and, you know, obviously there's, there's all this infrastructure change. Yeah. How is that going to impact the transportation side of the business? Do you think, well, there, there will have to make some concessions on weight. Will it have to carry less cars? Um, what's your, what's your take on that? So I'm proud of the fact that I already set up the FMCSA uh, and I'm not here to pick on the FMCSA and I don't know anybody that works at the FMCSA. And they're just trying to keep the roads safe, but sometimes in the name of safety, we go too far and we get it wrong. And on the EV stuff, just like ELD and exemptions, I mean, there are already the OIDA, uh, Owner Operator Independent Driver Association, something like that, is a, an active organization on behalf of owner operators and truckers saying to associations like the Federal Highway Administration, etc., Hey guys, all you got to do is raise the, give us a 10% raise on the amount of weight the trucks can carry and we'll be fine. But if you don't raise, if you don't, so it's just a, it's just changing a law. Get the pen out. If we just change that little law right there, give us 10% more weight capacity, then we'll be fine. Yeah. But if that doesn't happen, which why wouldn't it? I don't know, because somebody has an axe to grind with another dude in another state and because of this and that, your pork <laughs> and my pork. <laughs> or will it destroy the roads and the bridges will crack? I mean, I don't know. But so it can either be solved through legislation or if it can't and, you know, uh, we're going to destroy trees and everything, which I'm, I like trees, by the way. That's but doesn't the weight have to do with the <laughs> with the roads itself so that they don't crack and break and but we don't know actually okay. i mean right because do roads crack because trucks are too heavy okay, i don't know so that's what i that's what i thought i don't know way, right? but i don't yeah it's true what about well, those giant the other thing to yeah, think about is that it's not like these roads were built yesterday like if they do crack, what we rebuild the roads that haven't been rebuilt in fifty years. Yeah, but why do you think the, the <laughs> infrastructure? That's like here. Our infrastructure used to be the best in the world, and now it's not. It's just it just isn't. Well, yeah. I've been to like I just was in Turkey for in July, and uh, I was blown away. Their infrastructure just was far superior. Oh wow. Right. So, I, but it was argument. amazing. It was amazing. I could not believe it. It just blew my mind. Right. So, so the argument is, well, we don't want you guys to drive heavier trucks because you might crack the roads. 
No, no, I'm no, talking about your to, point. Like and you're saying, R wasn't. You're you're talking about ours not being built yesterday. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And they when it when they were built, they were incredible for the standards of the time. But mm -hmm. we've kind of left that. We haven't done the upkeeping, right? right? Exactly. So, so now so, we're saying, well, we got we don't want you guys to drive on that thing we didn't upkeep. No, the, well, we do, but well, we, we don't have the money because we the regulation. It, that's we, where the regulation. We diverted all in. the money to something else. We don't have that anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, he knows. Yeah. Well, I tell you, here's the thing: is but th here's one of the assumptions. Do we still need nine SUVs on every truck, or can we just deal mm -hmm. with eight? I mean, yeah. and that's if, what that's what if, I think. That's yeah. what I think is going to happen. That's why I asked yeah. that question when the beginning, yeah. because <laughs> I think that there's going to be, there's just going to be less inventory altogether. Exactly. That's that's right. And then that's going to force some, some compression, if you will. And so, and, and maybe even, I don't know, man, maybe it takes like, like the guy that started pot, I was listening to his, uh, to his journey when I, um, you know, during a workout, I, I listened to the show called how I built that. And this guy that started Pod, he used to own these kind of these U-Haul storage places. And he was like, dude, this is very inefficient. And, you know, people got to come here. What if they what if I could just put gotcha. the pod, pod, bring the pod to them and then yeah. transport it out? So I think there's going to be something like that. Like a, uh, there's going to for and I'm strictly talking about hauling cars. I'm not talking about transportation as a whole because that's a totally different beast. Yep. But I think that. There's gonna be there's gonna come a company, a disruptor of some sort that's gonna do one to one sort of a deal and it's gonna figure out the logistics for that and be able to pick up a car, a single car that you sell online and take it to wherever its destination is, whether it, it be you know 50 miles, 100 miles, 200 miles, whatever that because then you can truly compete with with like Carvanas and the brooms if you had that 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 piece figured out. I don't know. It's my thoughts, but well, and I, I almost feel bad that I ate up so much time on other things because <laughs> Carvana, CarMax, these companies are building in-house transportation networks, and mm -hmm. that tells you something. If 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 a company is going to build its own transportation network, it tells you, yeah, your your company wasn't doing it for me. We're going to do it in-house. Right. Why is that? Is it yeah. because of cost? Is it because of structure? Right. There are so many things that are changing, but I will say this. One of the functions of ATI is to be an alternative source because the future is going to look a lot different than the past did. What What's going to happen is going to, I think, be somewhat unpredictable. I think some cars are going to drive themselves. <coughs> what? Yeah. That's, yeah, I agree. Uh, and that that's definitely not something anybody wants to hear. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but yeah, it's, so we just have to pay as much attention as we can and, and be ready to, to switch it up because sure. sure. nothing's, the, nothing's the same as it was. My gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, even off. Right on. Yeah. It's crazy. Thank you. Jay. Thank fun. you so much, dude, for doing really this. Fun. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we do have one question that we ask everybody that comes on the show. And that question is. Where do you see the automotive industry headed in the next five years and why? Hmm. Um, well, I think auto auctions are a good place to start in that um, it would appear that the physical auction is changing faster than expected. And this is important because it relates to inventory, wholesale, uh, supply. And so, yeah, technology is picking up the shortfall to find creative new ways for dealers to maintain inventory, and that affects the rest of the ecosystem. And so for transportation businesses not paying any attention to that, that is a mistake. Uh, in fact, we all need to, we just need to accept that things are changing faster in ways that we we hadn't predicted, we may not want. And so in another five years, in 2027, 
I don't know. Are they are batteries going to get lighter? Will there be a next generation of EV? Will hydrogen actually be a thing? Will there still be gas cars? Man, I don't know. Because the last five has been so unpredictable. I don't know. But I know that you got to, man, you got to, you got to read the news every day. Get as much information as you can if you're going to, if you're going to stay in this business and be profitable. And, uh, and any, any video you watch where you get advice, check the year on that thing, man. Because if it's prior to 2020, skip it. Yes. There it is, folks. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. Thank you for, for joining us today. That's all the time that we have. And as usual, we'll talk later we only host the well respected the vendor lexus nexus we don't sell digital marketing what you do we inspected what our dt vendor man is missing now more than ever businesses need more efficient sales that's why thousands of dealerships trust four eyes to help with things like automated inventory email updates and ensuring all of your leads get into the crm to try four eyes for free visit four eyes.io slash dealer talk that's foreyes.io slash dealer talk.